we thought I was going to get knocked out. As Kerry Davis spoke at the podium, so you have so many different views coming from people's opinion, and that's cool. But sometimes the best thing to say is nothing, especially from a guy that people know is so vocal. But even being so vocal, I'm just as powerful as I realize when I don't say anything. So I'm still winning, winning, you know, I don't mean if I don't speak. And what I mean by winning, they're going to question why I haven't said anything. That means I'm in control. That means that I don't have to get into a whole bunch of debate about something that most of y'all read about. I don't have to get into a debate on something that was already ruled about people I never known. From one commission to another commission. So the landscape that was set up as I was listening to very, very diligently of the speakers that came out. One Richard Schaefer, then Carrie Davis, then Gary Shaw, and only but one person, and that is Gary Shaw, start talking about the past. He started talking about something that has nothing to do with now, in April 28th. Just like I don't want to talk about previous victories or last victories or history making events that I've been privileged to be into. Because that's yesterday. You reflect but don't reflect too long because now is really important than yesterday. Because it's what you do now, the lately move. It's what you've done lately. And so I use all these comments from the first two or three speakers to set up what I was not going to say and play into that game of yesterday. Everybody here has audio, iPhone, videos, it's still there. Don't go nowhere. Doesn't means that you believe this or believe that. What happened, happened. Doctor report, MRI report, AC report. When you have documentation, you have film, you can't fake what's in front of you. And we know in history that Rodney King got beat down like a dog. They said it didn't happen. So understand we got some minds in the world that think that even though you see it, it really didn't happen. You shouldn't act like it happened. You should somehow think it was different. Well, we all knew he got his ass kicked, handcuffed. And I'm just bringing that out to let you know that there are all people that are amongst us in life. I'm not saying they're bad people. But they see different than what others see, no matter if that TV have two women on there right now, or well, a couple of people now, there's somebody will tell you that that's not the case. So why go back to talk about stuff that happened then? Let's talk about it now. And that's why we're at this table. So it wasn't no use for me to get up on the podium and feed into his game. I shut him down by not saying nothing. It wasn't no use for me to get up there and debate that y'all ain't come for that. Y'all came for two things. Y'all came to eat free, and you came to get some interview. So, I've been doing this 24 years, man. I ain't no, you're not a rookie, you're not a rookie, he's not a rookie. Most of y'all guys here in front of me are not rookies to the business that y'all do. I'm not a rookie either. I see it coming before it even comes my way. So, they set it up nicely for me. Look, man, everything was said was said. From their side, from my side, it was said. I'm looking to make history for the third time, maybe fourth. 
<laughs> like leaving out one. I'm six and zero in Atlanta. I'm six and one in Atlanta City, and that one is in 1988 to Clinton Mitchell. I lost a four round decision. First fight. My first fight out of the penitentiary. I will be seven and one. April 29th, that Sunday. The day after, or hours after. That's where my head is at, and that's what I believe. Nothing. 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 Nothing happened. I mean, something happened. Just from how he fought, you can't No, it me of going on a date. You don't know nothing about a girl because she kiss you. Was the sex good? I don't know. You got to speculate what it would have been. That's the perfect concept I can give you is that you kissed her. She said, good night. You said, good night? Yes, good night. Okay. If you get a chance to do it again, you'll come with a different way. Because you know that the first time, you got a good night. So you would make sure the second time that you invite over your house, where she got to use you to go home. And all of a sudden, you get some stomach ache. It's not like I used this before. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Chad said that he's worried that something will happen to you between now and the fight and that you won't show up for the date. So, what uh, what kind of condition is your shoulder in and what kind of shape are you in uh, heading for this fight? I'm in great shape. Always because of my lifestyle. I'm not actually in my fighting mode shape yet because obviously uh, my camp will start in another week. But I wouldn't embarrass myself and my legacy to not show up. That's not going to happen. I, look, I've been called a lot of things. And I've been a lot of things. But I don't think you believe that. Sh not show up. Show up for what? Yes, listen, listen. Why would I not show up when I go to the hometown of another man, win his title, and come back in front of 30,000 Canadians? Why would I not show up when I go to Quito, Ecuador, young fighter, fighter Segundo Mercado, got knocked on my ass twice and came back and fought my way to a draw. So now my heart is being tested through a rookie thanking God. Why interact that? See, when guys say these things, you know, I'm, I'm the top Ali of this era. And for me to feed into and get emotional about what a guy say about questioning me, y'all know that's, 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 just, that's just something for you to fill your paper up with. I ain't, my, listen, I don't tell nobody how to do their job. But I'll be Bernard the report now. You mean to tell me that you think Bernard Hopkins, with his own legacy, is that scared of you where he would not show up for a fight? This is me as a reporter. Anything I put my hand on, I'll be the best and maybe the great at it. Because I said, hold, wait a minute, and I ain't, you know, I'm, I'm here to report. But you mean to tell me that you really think in your heart that Bernard Hopkins won't, Bernard Hopkins won't show up because he would not want to fight you? Yeah, he will come up with it. So you're saying that it's a possibility. So what are you going to do? You're going to train possibility that he might get hurt, or you're going to train that I'm going to show up? If you train and I won't show up, you're in trouble. You go home early, baby. So can you understand the unsettling in this thinking? So how he's going to train, you can't mess with this, this is strong. How he's going to train, if you listen to a person and tell you how smart they are, long enough. He told this reporter here, your name sir, excuse me. Greg He told Greg that he's afraid that I'm not going to show up, maybe get injured. How are you going training saying, hey man, not show up? Well, I hope you train that I won't show up. <laughs> You listen to a person, he will give you his plan. 
he would tell you where he's thinking. I think he's thinking too far into it. Whether you show up or not, I'm going to be ready. And while he's looking to see what he probably thinks that he believes, that's his excuse. But I, for the good fight, I underestimated his ability. He's already lining it up. He's a veteran. He's a legend. Y'all won't ask him no more questions after that. Well, I mean, how are you going to beat a guy up that submitted to what y'all know I've been? I've mean, never earned that. Give it to me. But I'm going in there no matter what he says to do what Bernard do. That is to execute the best plan in camp and that fight night. There's no more really conversation. I've been talking for two and a half decades. I just want to go in camp, kiss my family, play with my kids, go back to Miami where I've been training at already for two weeks. The only reason I got back on the plane to come here is because of the press tour. And I'm out. I'm out. Experience how important are the mind games, especially with it the ain't important at all. It ain't important at all because but can you mess him up a little bit? It, 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 you're not a professional if I can beat you by talking. Mind games don't make you a legend, mind games don't make you a champion. I think it distorts my legacy when someone says Bernard is successful is because he plays mind games on a guy and they couldn't perform, they want to perform. Well, you might say I drug somebody, it's the same thing. I think you got to look at a person coming in the ring saying to themselves, his intentions was to do things that Bernard didn't let him do. The art of the game is to take a guy's best weapon and systematically use it against them. You know what you want to do. You know what you're capable of doing. But I damn sure ain't let you do it. That's what we're taught from grade school. That's the alphabetical order. We have two rules that I set. I hit you, you don't hit me. That's the rule. I have to physically let him know that, know that by doing what? But I have to do that. Way. And it ain't voluntarily going to be accepted by my opponent because he's going to rebel against it, of course, until I make him submit. And it comes a time in a fight, in a game, no matter what kind of sport it is, basketball, football, where you can sit back and see basically where the momentum is going. Everybody here can look back at a situation, sport or non-sport, and say, man, this is not going well. I'm starting to see something in this fourth round. Uh, and, and, and you're shocked, you, and you start writing. Yo, he just took him out of this game. No, he's supposed to be throwing a hundred round punches around, Chad Dawson said. When they did the copy box, you know what he threw so what was so he came out, I'm gonna throw two hundred punches around, you know, because I'm old. I cut him down. He threw less than 30 punches around. Look at the stats. I might be off a round or two, but he damn sure ain't throw 200. See, when you can't hit a target, why waste bullets? Mentally, he'll stop throwing punches. You gonna throw at the window? Are you? You wanna save energy? So I, you throw four or five times and you barely get one in. It makes you think because you're human. It's, that thinking stops your activity. And now I'm pickpocketing you. The next thing you know, you're fighting me off you. <laughs> this is the difference than fighting somebody than fighting them off you. Did you want this fight? Did you want the rematch? I wouldn't be here. Did you want it right away? I wanted it as soon as I turned 50, but I wouldn't be here. You don't come to a fight and you don't want it, can't nobody put a gun in my head and say come to a fight. 
if I wouldn't have won the fight, I would have told the WBC, I respect the WBC, I respect what they ordered, here's your belt back. So when you hear a person ask me that, I got a question your question. See, you got a degree in college, right? I figured that. Get your money. Well, no excuse, dog. Hey, listen, 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 listen. No, no excuse, dog. I just, I just spoke my my opinion because I'm letting you know you. I don't prove to be smart, but you mess with a sharp guy. I ain't the average boxer. Boxing is what I do, but it's not who I am. Keep testing me with some more. I can give you some more, and I won't get angry. It's not angry. I, my emotions is checked. Trust me. I stayed out of the penitentiary for 24 years. Trust me. My emotions, all that I've seen and all that I've been tested with, you can never get me back there for doing something unemotionless or emotionless. Excuse me. So trust me. When you don't take it personal, I won't take it personal. But when you say to me that I want this fight, and then I give you my answer with a little caviar on it, you say, well, they said it. Never repeat what a fool says to you because it's coming out of your mouth. You become that fool. My mother always told me that. Never repeat what a fool says. You become that fool. Like you never sleep with a person if you know he had AIDS, would you? Or she? Well, I ain't say he, because I never heard that about you, but she. <laughs> I feel good fighting where I'm at, but obviously I can't downplay that I'm in one of my first fight of my career. And they say the thing about full circle in life. I'm going back to where I started my first career. Look how profound, great question, man. because that might have got missed. Here I'm back. Less than a year and a half out of the penitentiary. And my first career, my first loss was in Atlantic City, and I didn't let that failure bring me back to D Block. You questioned my heart. You questioned my legacy. You questioned where my role at in the underdog of becoming someone that surprises and actually turn the clock, turn the page on what people predict my life should be like. They've done that before in my personal life. Be dead at 19, 47. you never be nothing a multi-millionaire and ain't spending a dollar only on food. I don't say that to boast, I don't say that to brag. But if you breathe the same air that I breathe and you wipe your ass the same way I wipe your ass when you defecate, then your opinion of me is not my destiny. Boxing is what I do, but it's not who I am. And just like the energy and the history and the legacy of the people that came before me, I watched a video of Joe Lewis, the portrayal of America. I watched the Muhammad Ali. I watched that and I say to myself, and that last night up at the stairs in the W, across the street, and I watched the portrayal of Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis was nice to everybody. He was even so nice, he, he, he cut his career at the peak of it to go fight for a country that thought loved him. <laughs> they asked me why I'm still fighting. I said, I'm getting Joe Lewis money. All that Joe Frazier, Joe Lewis, and anybody didn't get it, y'all motherfuckers gonna pay me and I'm gonna get it. Why are you still fighting? So what? Am I winning? Am I embarrassing myself? Y'all wanna see me fall. I want a crowd to see me when Ali said to the lady, you here every time watching me fight. I said, yeah, girl, see your fucking brains get beat out. So when I watch the betrayal of Joe Lewis, I get motivated by that. Because I feel like I'm in a fight of this time. Not that time, but this time. It's all the same shit. It just got different dressings around it.
you're, you're kind of talking about your survival skills being the key to everything. The survival, the survival skills is everything that over there. And, and so how have you evolved in order to survive with these younger guys and keep handling them the way you have? Because I'm not in the mindset of surviving. I'm in a mindset of defending. And when you're surviving, you're just trying to live. I'm defending what's mine and what I have around my waist. So when you defend, your mentality is different. When you defend your house from burglars, when you defend your children from child molesters, you in a different fucking frame of mind. But when you're surviving, you are in a situation where your ass is up in the air and your pants down and you will get screwed the rough way. And so when you survive, you're just trying to live. But when you defend, you're defending what you already have. That's why it's defense. And that's what I do. I've been defending since my career started. I've been defending everything that I needed to defend. Why? It's because I always been in a position where I had to defend me. This makes no difference.